If I told you I could save you $300 a year in your utility costs, what do you think you would do? Oh, love you, buddy. That's what you ought to do. On the build show today, we're talking heat pump water heaters. No matter whether you're building new, remodeling, or changing out an existing unit, these are an impressive technology. There's a bunch of manufacturers that make them. We've got a lot of nerdy stats for you. We're going to figure out the best unit for you that's currently produced in 2020. Today's episode, all about heat pump water heaters. Let's get going. Okay, so no matter your reason for needing a water heater, whether you're building a new house, remodeling, or maybe changing out a broken unit, I think that heat pump water heaters should be a top choice for you. Let's look at the math real quick, and then I'm going to get into all the nerdy details. First off, let's look at strictly annual energy costs. Any water heater that you buy these days is going to have one of these yellow stickers on it, and there's two pieces of information that we really want to look at annual energy costs and how much water we're going to get out of this unit in the first hour. Now this energy uh, guide right here is actually from a electric resistance tank, a standard 50 gallon tank. These are ubiquitous. It's probably the cheapest thing you can buy actually for your house. This particular model that I found on the internet was about 400 bucks for one of those. But look what an energy pig this is. 420 bucks in electricity for an average family, and it's only gonna give me 61 gallons of hot water in the first hour. Not a lot of water for a lot of energy use. Now on the other hand, if I bought a 50 gallon gas hot water heater, that's your standard gas tank that we've used for years, they're gonna run you about 550, 600 bucks maybe for a real basic inexpensive model. Now we always think of gas as being the cheaper choice, but look at this, 289, 288, almost 300 bucks. Not really that much lower in energy costs than this guy. So gas, yes, it's gonna be a little cheaper, but you're still gonna spend a fair amount to operate that. Now on the other hand, a 50 gallon heat pump water heater, check this out. A hundred bucks, $104 for this particular model. This is again, 50 gallons. It's gonna actually get you a little bit more on the first hour rating. This one is 65 gallons, just shy of what the gas model was. That gas model was gonna use 80, it was gonna give you 86 gallons. So a little bit more gas in the first hour. But that operating cost right there is what really gets me. It means that your bill is gonna be much, much lower. And if we compare that to this guy, look, these are both using electricity, no brainer switch to the heat pump. I get more water out of it, and I'm using a third or fourth of the electricity. Crazy. Okay, now one last one I wanna show you though is this one right here. This is an 80 gallon water heater. That'd be actually this one. This is actually this one. No, it's not this model. This is a different model. This is a little higher at 218. But this is the Ream, which is one of the more efficient models. This is gonna give us, look at that, 87 gallons in the first hour. Much better than that gas 50 gallon tank. And I'm only using 150 bucks of electricity. My point here is no matter what you're putting in, whether it's a replacement for an electric or you even a replacement for the gas, these heat pump water heaters should absolutely be on your list. Now one thing that's not mentioned on there though is the output of these. When this unit is running in your house, it actually has a couple of benefits to your house. And see this right here? That's an air intake. Oh, pardon me, that's an air exhaust. The air intake's on top, that's an air exhaust. When this unit runs, the, the actual heating tank is down here. This is the 80 gallons on this particular model. And up here is the heat pump. It's basically like a refrigerator on steroids. It's got the same kind of mechanism where it's pulling heat out of the air, wherever it's located. It's dumping that heat into the tank. And then the output down here when it's jumping out, when it's dumping that air out, is gonna be cool and dehumidified air. Now you need to have a drain somewhere near this because it's gonna condensate. There's gonna be a little bit of that dripping that happens. And the, uh, the thing that I like about these is, for instance, in my Texas house, I'm gonna mount mine in my garage here. It's gonna help cool my garage. Now depending on the unit, it's gonna have a different size motor up top, but it's gonna give several thousand to as much as a half a ton, 6,000 BTUs of cooling when it runs, 
and it's going to draw moisture out of the air as well. So think about this in your basement. If you had this in your basement somewhere, a lot of times people are putting dehumidifiers in the basement. This is also going to dehumidify the air. So there's a lot of side benefits besides that operating cost. All right, now let's look at the available models in the marketplace and let's talk about cost before we get into the, all the features. When we talk 80 gallon models, this chart here at the big number is always going to be the 80 gallon model. We range from a low side of about 18, a little more than 1800 bucks to a $4,000 model. Now let's break this down a little bit. Ream sells theirs under Ream and under Rude, and oh by the way, they've been making these for a long time. I put one of the very first models of Ream that they came out with almost 10 years ago now. They're on Gen 4 now on the Ream model, so they've been around for a while, they've been refining these, and they're very, very efficient. Look, this one actually has the highest EF rating on the chart. We'll talk about that in a second. AO Smith, that's actually this model that I have right here next to me. One of the least cost models for the 80 gallon. Bradford White, 2,000 bucks. Now this is an interesting model. This is from Germany. This is Stiebel Eltron. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering their name. A little bit more expensive, but a very efficient unit. And they don't rely on resistance heat. They're really focused on just using the heat pump. This is a very interesting model. And then the most expensive one on the list is a little different from all these others. This is by Sandin. They're, they're a Japanese company. And this is actually a split unit, meaning you've got a tank inside. And by the way, their tank is stainless steel, which means it's going to be around a long time. And then outside is the heat pump, which is where you'd want that, right? You're going to be pulling that heat from the outside air. The other thing that's really interesting about that model is it uses CO2 as the refrigerant. So there's no Freon, there's no things uh, in that gas that are going to potentially add to global warming. It's literally just using CO2 gas. Pretty interesting. Okay, most of these models are going to make a small, a medium, and a big size. If you look down here, these are the tank sizes available. Ream makes one of the smallest models down to a 40 gallon. They also make 50, 65, and 80. A.O. Smith, they only make the kind of smaller 50 and the big 80. Bradford White, the same. They make some in-betweens. Strebel Elton, they make a 58 gallon, kind of an oddball size, and an 80. And then when you go sand, and remember these inside tanks, they're really just a storage tank. They're stainless steel. They make a small, a pretty big one at 83, and a huge one at 119 gallons. Now this is the only one though that will give you very, very hot water. That sandin will go up to 175 degrees. You could probably use it for some space heating, especially if you had, um, uh, let's say, warm board in your house and you're using that to warm your hardwood floors. You could do that, especially if you had the bigger size. And you're gonna have a lot of capacity on this one, especially if you set that to the higher ratings. Now, most of these other models up here, they're not gonna go any hotter than 135, maybe 140 degrees. So not nearly as hot as that sand and up to 175. The point of this is you wanna consider the bigger model if you've got a lot of use in your house. Almost all these bigger models, this is the first hour rating for the 80 gallon tanks. They're all gonna give you somewhere around 80 gallons in the first hour, which is a lot of hot water output. The thing about heat pumps though, is they run slower. It's gonna take them a while to refresh. If that tank was totally drained, at my house I have four kids, I'm gonna put an 80 gallon at my house. I'm, I'm very likely sure that we're gonna drain that tank sometimes. I'm gonna run it at a higher setting. I think it's gonna be able to keep up with my demand, but that's why I'm going with the 80. And I'm also gonna run mine on, this AO Smith has something called efficiency mode. Some of them are gonna call them eco modes or some other names, but the point is you wanna run it on the mode that's gonna select heat pump all the time and not default to using resistance heat. When the resistance elements kick on, they're gonna use a lot more electricity. You wanna try and see if your household can get away with only using heat pump mode. And that might mean varying your showers a little bit. My family of six, I may make my kids take shorter showers or take a shower in the earlier evening so my teenage daughter, let's say, or my wife can take a longer shower and not worry about draining the tank. All right, next let's talk uh, annual energy costs. These are straight from these yellow labels right here for all these. 
Ream does real, real well, 150 bucks a year. Stiebel Eltron, pretty much the same. A.O. Smith, a little bit more, not quite as efficient. Same with the Bradford White. And then you're gonna see this UEF or EF. It's been, la the label has changed to this uniform energy factor and there's a few more things that play into it. But basically this number is relating to how much hot water you're getting out for every dollar of fuel you put in. Meaning in this case, these are all electric, meaning for every dollar of electricity we put in, this ream is gonna give us $4 in hot water. If you compare these numbers to a standard electric resistance tank, those are gonna be just shy of one. And if you're gonna compare that to natural gas, when you have a natural gas unit, they might vary from the standard 50 gallon, the cheap ones at like 0.6 or maybe 0.7 to the really expensive high efficiency ones, 0.9-ish, which means that for every dollar of natural gas, I'm getting on a real high efficiency one, 0.9, 90 cents, let's say, of hot water out of that. Now, this is a whole other video probably, but one of the things that in my circles as talking about uh, really high efficiency houses, there's a lot of talk about using all electricity and getting away from natural gas. What's happening is, in a lot of parts of the world, they're actually switching away from natural gas because of the global warming potential. And we also just know at some point we're gonna run out of our natural gas petroleum resources, so why not switch over to electricity? For instance, at my house, I'm gonna have a solar array on my roof. I'll be able to make the electricity on the roof, send that electricity down to my water heater here, and use that to make free hot water, basically. It's a no-brainer, it's a virtuous cycle. And there are some places in the world, like Vancouver, British Columbia, which in a year or two from now, you won't be able to buy a natural gas appliance. Even if you have a 50 year old house that has a gas hot water heater, when you do replace that when it dies, your only choice in a year or two is gonna be buying an electric heat pump model because the utility locally is saying we're gonna get away from natural gas. I think it's gonna be a while till that happens in the United States and in, particularly in Texas where I am, but that day will come. All right, a couple other things I wanna uh, mention briefly on here. Most of these units have a pretty darn good warranty, longer warranty numbers. The Sandin unit actually has an incredible warranty because the first three years they include labor as well. And the best I could tell from reading their websites, they don't include labor on some of these longer warranties. So you might get some parts, you might get some help, but you're probably still gonna have to pay something, especially because the plumber's gonna need to get paid to come out there. I think probably a big reason why these have such a longer warranty is because you've got that stainless steel tank. Every other model over here is gonna have a steel tank that's been coated or lined with something, and you really wanna be cautious about changing your anode rod. Stay tuned for a future video, I'll be talking about that. I do wanna mention a big thanks to my friend Martin Holliday, who writes for the greenbuildingadvisor.com website that's an offshoot of fine home building. Martin Holiday has done some great articles on heat pump water heaters and I'll link to that below. If you're not currently a member of GBA, that might even be worth membership right there alone to make sure that you can read all of Martin's writings on this. He's done a lot of good information and I'll link to those below. All right guys, that's pretty much it. If you look at this list, these units have a lot of similarities and from the most efficient to the least efficient, it's really not a terrible difference, but look at the uh, cost on the first cost for buying these. The last thing that I do wanna mention is check out the rebates that are available. For instance, when I was doing some research on this, on my uh, Lowe's website that I went to, if you bought a 50 gallon, like this, heat pump water heater, that unit runs about 1300 bucks brand new, but it's gonna show you in their website that there's $1,100 in rebates Currently, my utility here in Austin, Texas has an $800 rebate on buying a heat pump water heater. That's actually cash back to you. And through the end of 2020, no matter where you are in the US, the federal government's gonna give you a $300 tax credit. That means no matter what your tax bill is, you can take $300 off that bill. So it's not a check from the government for $300, but it means you'll pay $300 less in taxes this year, or you might get an additional rebate. So these units, even though they look pretty expensive to start with, check out the rebates that you might find locally. You may be surprised. For instance, like I said, that 50 gallon uh, model, if you bought this one in the ream, 
you're talking about a really cheap model to begin with, plus it's gonna be saving you money, money, money over the years. And even if you bought these at full price, if you compare this to the electric or the gas in terms of operating costs, we're talking about savings in just a couple of years and paying for that model. And if you keep that anode rod going and you keep that unit for much longer than 10 years, which they should go much longer than that, I think you're in good shape. Quick for instance, I put a ream model in, 50 gallon one. It was their first generation in 2010. That model is still going strong in my client's crawl space today. And that was just the first generation model, which means they've gotten even more efficient and even more reliable would be my guess as the years go on. Guys, if you want more information, I'll try and put some links to some of these websites below. No one paid me for this video. I don't have any affiliation with any of these companies. This is trying, I was trying to give you good unbiased information. I do really like that that ream is on the fourth generation. I actually happen to have this AO Smith because I got it for another video. So that's one reason why I'm installing the AO Smith uh, at my house uh, right now. And if you look at the passive house, uh, guys, this is kind of a side note because some of you may be new to the channel, but the people that are doing the ultimate efficiency, they're putting this Japanese sand and model on. Uh, it is more expensive, it's double the cost, but there's a lot of other things you can do with it. And again, that stainless steel tank, that really gets me excited that this could be a very, very long lasting unit. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.